コンコートークアロハ everyone Thank you very much for listening to this program コンコートークは、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、ポッドキャストで、So, what happened was,、um, one day, we call it the gyoza incident. Gyoza、uh, incident. Yeah, gyoza is、um, the pot stickers. And、uh, one day, my dad was making a whole bunch of gyoza, handmade, even made the,、uh, um, I think the wrappers, I think. And he, he finished making almost like 50 gyoza, so we can、oh. like freeze for later on. And he was right about to pan fry them when my mother was working at the Japanese school. And she came back at, in the evening and she usually comes straight into the house. But that particular day, for some reason, she took a little walk around the garden in a driveway and she noticed that,、uh, a whole section of like grass was missing.、Uh, and that grass looked like, um, chives, Mira, you know, chives. So my mom was surprised and she was like, what happened? What happened to the plants? And my mom was like worried because she rushed in the house and asked Sensei, I was like, Sensei, what happened to the, the grass that was growing there? And he's like, Oh, I chopped it up and put it into the gyoza. And she was like, No, 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 that's poison. It's toxic. Oh, it's, oh um, the, the star of Bethlehem, which has like a digitalis effect in it and it could stop the heart.、Mm. And so. <laughs> We're like, like the whole Yano family was gonna die that night or something. I don't know. We're going to the ER. But thankfully, my mom was able to stop him before he pan fried him. So unfortunately, we had to discard them. We, we dug a hole in the backyard and just threw it all in the hole and just buried it. So it would just become compost again. But we did not eat the gyoza that night. And it was a really big, big Okage blessing. And then,、uh, I think a couple, like 10 days ago, I think. My grandma from Japan called, wait, wait, no, no, my mom called her, I think. My mom called her, and the first thing my grandma said to my mom was, Eiko chan, something happened 10 days ago, didn't it? Didn't something happen 10 days ago? And my mom was like, huh? No, nothing happened 10 days ago, nothing. And she's like, no, no, something, something terrible was about to happen or something. 
And my mom was like, oh, yeah, the gyoza incident. Yeah, we were almost going to die that <laughs> if we ate the gyoza. And my grandma said, you see, I knew something like crazy was about to happen because in, in, in her dream, she kept calling my mom's name and she was shouting. She's like, Leko-chan, Leko-chan, Leko-chan. It's like, you know, like, stop what you're doing, kind of mm. hollering in her dream. And she knew something was up in Hawaii. <laughs> it's almost like her, her spirit, even as far away from Japan, stopped that from happening and it, everything coincided where like we were saved <laughs> yes you know it, it couldn't have been a coincidence i mean how my mom came back at that particular time how my mom took a little you know look into the garden and how my mom noticed that the the, the grass was missing mm -hmm. and how she ran into the house and caught my dad because he put it in the gyoza and so he we were about, we were able to stop that from happening. And it just brings chills down the spine. Like, like what, what happened? Mm -hmm. What would have happened to us if we ate it? <laughs> and that was a lot of grass, you know. So my dad thought it was chives, but it was a star of Bethlehem and he minced it really nicely. And it was like a big, big bundle, a thick bundle of that star of Bethlehem. And the whole mixture was green. So, oh my goodness. It was a great blessing. <laughs> and that was a that was my story here. Thank goodness for grandma. I know. Oh, oh that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Mitama sama, um, I think I have always always just felt a presence. Um mm, uh you know, like you can always I don't know, I, I get weird weird feelings like I'm being watched sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. But uh I always feel Mitama Sama's support. Um, mm. you know, whether it be my dad or um my grandparent. Um, uh, you know, uh, the fact that I got I was able to study in uh, at Kyushu University for one year, I think that was my the Mitama Sama of my my grandfather and mother his because he always wanted and I didn't find this out until later, but he always wanted he always wanted to go to Kyushu. Um and since he wasn't able to go, he always wanted one of his kids to go or someone in the family to go. And so the story my uncle told me when I got there um, and I had an opportunity to, to study at Kyushu Daigaku for a year in college, um, you know, he, he definitely said that there was no way, there was no, um, I didn't go to college thinking I was going to go study in Japan for it. And I didn't, I certainly didn't think that I was going to go to Kyushu Daigaku. But it just so happened that that was one of the choices that we could make. And we had to th choose three, three colleges. And normally you don't get your first choice. But my, I put my first choice as Kyushu Daigaku. And then I think the second one was Fukuoka Kyoiku Daigaku or something. I don't remember what my third choice was. But I got my, that first choice as Kyushu Daigaku. So I definitely think that was Mitama Sama no Hataraki. Um, also the fact that I live here, that I'm living here in Honolulu Church right now, is also Mitama Sama no Hataraki. Um, it's strange that, yeah, I just feel like somewhere someone had some kind of role. Like my dad had a lot to do with it. I think a lot of the Mitama Sama had a lot to do with it, with me ending up here um, and living in the church. And I definitely feel like I'm always being told to have more faith. And the one way to get me to come to church every day is to make me live here. So that's <laughs> that definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my experience I like to share is that when I was uh, about 10 or 11 years old, I was shocked when I asked my father about well, the picture. We have a fam family house altar, and they, they, there are some pictures. And they, there's uh, my great grandparent picture. And they, I thought I have met them because I have a vivid memory with them. So I talked to my father. In conversation, I have met them, right? I pointed out the uh, the great grand great great grandparents, and my father said, "No, no, no, they passed away before you you were born." And I was so shocked that uh, I have a vivid memory that I was I, I was playing in the sandbox and they, they watch him. Wow! And they, oh, how come I just forgot? But after I became minister, I realized oh, they they're watching me. 
all the time. So that's that's why I have a big memory. I mean, the vision. So that、uh, I I think that's a message that we're watching over you. That was very interesting to me. Ah,、oh, that's really that's really amazing. Anything else? You have any experience? Well, I seen、um, my cat playing with a mitamasama. I I I'm pretty sure that was a mitamasama. Oh. And I saw it too, actually. Um, I was cleaning outside, um, under the eaves of the church, and I was on the ladder, and um, I see my cat playing with something on in the driveway. She's like jumping, hopping, like rolling over, and like chasing something, and nothing's there. I don't see anything. However, when I took a really closer look, I saw a spherical object. It was like a size of a grapefruit or like a softball. And it was transparent. It was like a like a globe of like water or like glass. And I could just see it rolling and bouncing and just kind of like flying, like hovering. And the cat Himesama was chasing it exactly in its motion. And it's as if the the ball or the orb saw me, look like looking at it. Like as soon as it kind of caught me looking at it, it vanished. And then my my cat stopped playing with the orb, and I was like, "Wow, what did I just see? I definitely saw something out of this world, something that you would not normally see." It just blew my mind.、Mm, interesting. Yeah. You know, when talk about mitamasama in Japanese, we mitamasama, but we talk about yure, a ghost in English.、Mm-hmm. We talk about ghosts feel like a scary, but oh. Someone told me, "Oh, there's a mitamasama." I feel like why is the mitamasama feel more、uh, comfortable? I, I'm、mm-hmm. not scared. Sometimes it's a night alone by myself in dark midnight. It's scary. The oh, you a or ghost. So, but no, no, no. That's a mitamasama. No problem. Feel that mitamasama is the one who supposed to support us, help us. Maybe sometimes they need help, so that's why they come out and ask help. But we something we shouldn't scared of, but more like. Help each other, kind of relationship we should have. The word ghost versus、uh, mitamasama. I think almost, almost the same, but when I use mitamasama, I feel more comfortable.、Mm. I'm gonna share when I met. If I met、uh, night march, you met night marchers. No, I haven't. I, 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 I never. But I have a story about night march. Kind of scary story, right? And then、mm-hmm. many people say I have been night march. I don't know if I. Uh, see them, but、uh, according to、um, one of the sensei, sensei's、uh, ancestors, they found the midst of the church. Somebody asked come to their home to pray because there's some kind of ghost around there.、Mm-hmm. Please、uh, pray, please help us because、uh, ghosts come out, the scary. And they ask the the monk, who is the monk? They say, oh, the strong spirit over there. So I I I I cannot、uh, remove them. One day I have to come any time. Something. But meanwhile,、uh, the house, the owner asked the sensei's answer to find the minister. He came. He came and pray. And then the next day, the the monk came. He was so shocked that there's nobody anymore. There's no spirit. The the owner. What happened? What did you do? The owner. Owner said, "Oh, I asked actually somebody else. And somebody else is a the Kongoku minister. And he said, 'Oh, I don't have any power to re- remove the spirit, but I asked Kamisama to help them. So maybe that works. Some people have used their own power, so very limited. Maybe they have a very special power, but if compared to Kamisama, the God, it's different. So it was interesting story to me that.、Uh, We can ask Kamisama to help、uh, Mitama. Some Mitama spirit, some Mitama spirits are not、uh, need help. It's not safe. We just need Kamisama to help. Yeah.、Um, one thing I noticed different that's different about Hongo Kyo and like other religions is、um, the house blessings, or like when people encounter like、um, haunted house or like the curses in the house or the family, and they want us to bless the area. In <clears throat> Like a lot of other religions and faith practices, um, we want to tend to um like chase away the spirit, you know,、mm. like exorcism, like shoo shoo, um, here some I don't know, like holy water or like some sacred salt or like garlic or whatever, and we try to just chase it away, just, like go away kind of prayer. But in、uh, Kungo Kyo, I I noticed it was different. 
we're Konkokyo house blessings and exor- we don't do exorcisms, but we, we pray for the well-being of the spirit that is there. If it's in the house, then we don't chase it out because it was there first. We want to acknowledge its presence and we want to uh, seek permission to allow us to live there or use that space. And further, we request for the spirit to help guide us and protect us. And I think that's so different. And we also ask Kami-sama's guidance and Konko-sama's spirit to mm. also help with the situation. So from a spirit's perspective, you know, from a standpoint of a spirit who is at unrest, and that's why he's causing all of this mischief. If I were the spirit, the evil spirit is causing all this, I would be like, oh, you finally get it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is my home. Don't try to kick me out. And none of that, none of that, um, you know, sacred salt is going to chase me away. I'm going to stay here. Nothing's going to chase me out. And to be acknowledged, to be prayed for, for my peace and happiness, I'll be like, wow, this is amazing. Thank you. You know, from a Mitama standpoint. And I'll, mm-hmm. I will happily guide the family that's living in the house. I think that's mm-hmm. so different from other faiths. I'm not trying to compare about that and just sort of, the different, you know, the difference of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That everything has a spirit is, I think, kind of part of Kungokyo as well. Like every, I don't know if it's not, well, I don't know how they would word it in Kungokyo, but my understanding of it is whether it be uh, the apartment that you're renting or the car that you're driving or, you know, any space that we enter, it has, everything has their own spirit. And unless you respect that, um, I feel like that's kind of connected to like Hawaiian mm-hmm. in way too. Um, that every has a spirit, every tree has a spirit, every living thing has a spirit, but not only living things, but also inanimate objects come with their own spirit. And we have to respect everything. So sometimes the Amy is the voice of the flowers top. That might be Mitama Zongatu. Oh, we should pray. Yeah, I forgot to pray for the single time to pray before that. So please help us so that everything is all right. Uh, I'm sorry that I forgot to pray before <laughs> recording everything. <laughs> but I just uh, uh, check the uh, language. In Japanese, we call jore. Jore is jo is remove rei mitama. Or jore, jore is uh, more purify mitama. Dispel mitama, consecrate mitama, uh, mitama spirit. That was an interesting concept of jore or jore. Like, uh, exorcism is more like dispel. Mm-hmm. But uh, mitama spirit need to be saved. We should pray for the kamisama. Because, uh, uh-huh. yes? Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, people live in Earth. I don't know how many billions right now. But think about people alive. But also think about people before to live with them. So not only living people, it's actually the people before the influence of our daily life. That relationship is very important. We cannot ignore them. We think about sometimes member day, member service. We honor before who die for the country. Think about them. So they exist in affecting our life. That relationship, we are not alone. We are, we are not li- live with only the people with body, but actual spirit in life. Mm-hmm. So we think about the ancestors and I wonder how many how many people I can name. How many ancestors I can name? You know, I can name my parents, grandparents, great grandparents, great 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 grandparents. And try. If we cannot name, I can kind of visualize. Can mm-hmm. you name your ancestors? Well, I I know my um up to my great grandparents and just one random grandparent that is at least six generations back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I try to call their name out every day. I try to. Mm, yeah, I wonder what kind of people they were. Because I've never met them before. But I'm sure if I ever see their picture, I'm sure there there might be some resemblance, you know? I'm like, oh, like, oh, that grandma has my, like, eyebrows or, like, my nose. And, you know, whenever we look into the mirror, we have resemblance of our ancestors from way back. And I noticed that my um my grandpa who passed away, he looks exactly like my oldest brother when he was young. He does. Oh my I goodness. I saw that. You yeah. know, his wartime picture? Oh my goodness. His eyes and everything, his whole 
facial structures look exactly like my brother. So I was like, you know, wow, DNA, it's in your blood. Yeah, I think I saw that Facebook post. <laughs> yeah. Like, David? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. they look completely. Mm-hmm. They did. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't actually know the names of my ancestors past my grandparents. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know on my mom's side for sure. I don't have the names. Uh, on my dad's side, I only recently, thanks to Koichi Sensei, they have that book, that Yastaki Matsutaro book that I think, like, I can recognize some of the pictures on there. That's definitely my uncle, like, Waikahu Sensei, and I can tell that, but then my, that would mean pictures of my dad in there. He's, like, super young, like, six years old or something, and I think I can imagine that's him, maybe, but I don't really, he doesn't really look anything like he did as an adult kind of understood the family family line the family tree um i'm grateful that i have a cousin on the yastake side that actually took has taken the time to to write out um the family tree the yastake family tree the yoshi church uh, sensei i know he was working on it a few years ago i think he's still working on it but um so i know there's something on that side that exists and if i ever wanted to know it then i could go and find out but i wonder if i wonder on my mom's side it's more and more that like as I get older, I understand the importance of leaving something behind for my, for, for the younger generation. So like my nephews and niece, will they understand? Because everything's in Japanese line, uh, especially on the other side. I think that's one of the, one of the things that I'll probably slowly work on to make sure that they, they understand the future generations. Yeah, that's uh, our responsibility that we should try to search our ancestors, try to know them. Also, the doubt we should tell our younger generation about our ancestors. I remember that I I have a uh, pictures and the names on like an album for my father's side. You can see the picture that relate to a kind of family uh, tree with pictures. And my father gave me that uh, in case something happened in Japan, at least we have it, so it's not gonna disappear. So I have it. I should. Uh, show my son later on too young but uh, I should tell him and you should keep it Can't mm-hmm. add it. Yeah. I think it's important to talk about our ancestors um, you know the, the struggles they've been through and what they've contributed to society and even like the family and the traditions they pass down like you know, even their recipes and their wisdom mm-hmm. because if it's not talked about and it's going to disappear forever and right. you know certain things were like passed down for generation and generation, it becomes like a family model. Right. You know, the, uh, the teaching, the founder left the teaching, immortality is important for humans. Immortality is when others keep praying, keep praying for you after you die. Mm-hmm. So immortality is important for humans. Immortality is when others keep praying for you after you die. That's mm-hmm. uh, important to think about our ancestors. Yeah. I remember a classmate telling the whole class, we were reading about the Titanic, and her great grandfather was supposed to ride on the Titanic, but he was late. Mm. So he missed it, and he was already sailing off. And he was like, "Wait!" And you know, he was like really bummed. But then later, it sank. So yeah. Anthony, um, I remember my classmate mm. telling us that if my great grandpa rode on a Titanic, I probably might not be born. Yeah, uh, that was very really interesting. You know, um, I heard uh, the story. The one family, so they're the siblings, and the mother, I think mother of oh, protagonist having cancer and treated, but is a terminal and uh, suffering from cancer. with a lot of pain. And uh, some siblings uh, uh, want her to live as much as possible, mm-hmm. while the other want her uh, let her go already. Mm-hmm. So she's suffering, and that's a unique situation. That uh, think about mother, both think about mother, but actually the mother is suffering, and just like the goal for others, the mother. But actually, that's for myself, for themselves, for the mother suffering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a uh, kind of conflict. Yeah. But uh, in Konko Kyo, or uh, even the Mitama spirit, we can communicate with each other, praying them or think about them so that it's not the end. Father suffering from cancer 
and his、uh, brother or sisters want her to live as much possible using the you know the medical the modern medical thing. But he 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 just won't、uh, let her go because she's very suffering. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.、And、so that's a, a big issue. That if we practice faith and if you know the relation between Vitama Sama and us, the death is not the end but new beginning. So some say the spiritual birthday. So we can let people go, even people are suffering, even though very we will love them, but still we can let them go. But some people so hard because love so much. I don't want to lose them. So even though they're suffering, we cannot have like let. They go. I think that、mm-hmm. um, the founders teaching is kind of、uh, good or help in that kind of situation. Yeah, death is so personal to each person.、Mm, you know, as we work in a hospital, we we see people dying often, but and it, and it seems like it's regular because it's like not your own family, but it's your own family. I I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna react.、Mm-hmm. But I just hope that I I'm ready and that. You know that they won't suffer. My parents won't suffer, and my parents always tell me, "Dare ga saki ni kuka wa kara nai ka na mimi." We never know who's gonna go first, so you know, don't expect to, you know, go go after your parents or go before. Or just don't expect that kind of thing because we never know. We never know. But just to always give thanks for our daily blessings. She always emphasizes that. So like, ah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Doesn't matter if you're healthy or young. Doesn't matter because you know we never know when death is gonna come. We may be awake in the morning, but in the evening we may be dead in a body bag, you know, because of an accident or like a sudden heart attack or like a stroke or various other ways to die out there. But yeah, we have to have the acceptance part. Part. I guess if we practice faith enough, then we can just give our daily thanks and be ready any time. <laughs> Have no attachment. Yeah, that's kind of that, that kind of makes you think about how we live. Like, like when you said, just just don't have any attachment、um, and be ready to go at any time. I think I I think it was my auntie that I remember her saying.、Um, and she's in her she's what she's eighty eighty two eighty two. She's still young.、Um, but I remember her saying that you know, it's it the way, and it's like that that just means you know I can, I'm ready to go at any time. And it's kind of I don't know I I I kind of it it's kind of、uh, touchy I mean I it's I don't know how to take that like be ready to go at any time but then you flip it out flip it around and is that isn't that like saying、uh, I guess if you take it in a bad way that could mean you're giving up on life it's not that you're giving up on life I don't know like how do I how do I I don't know how to put that in words you're kind of like living your life to the fullest at every moment. So, so that it's okay, so, so that you have no regrets.、Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're living your life where you're not causing a lot of trouble to people. You know, giving care to people you love, spending time with them. That's what's really important, I think. Yeah, people, you know, tend to like do their own thing and just avoid being with their loved ones and their friends. And and when their friends or loved ones do suddenly go. You're gonna be in great regret. Oh, I should have spent more time with like grandpa or like grandma. I should have asked her what the special recipe was, and you know we could have all done that when they were alive and they were well. So it's important to to do those things when while you can. There will be no regrets. Live with no regrets. Yeah. Every time I go to work, I I feel like this could be my last time, my last day at work. So. Try to do the best work that I can.、Mm. Yeah, it may seem morbid, but we, again, we never know. <laughs> we never, never, never know. So,、uh, and every time I go to work, I I say "yoroshiku negai shimas." You know,、um, like please allow me to do good work today at the hospital. And when I clock out, I say "arigatou gozaimashita." Thank you for allowing me to clock out safely. When I return home, drive home safely, I say thank you again in front of my altar. And then I just look forward to another day tomorrow, whether it would come or not. We can continue that kind of gratitude, part of gratitude daily, daily basis. Then you know your whole life will be a life of gratitude, and a life of gratitude really is a life that you have regrets.
right? So I think it's a good life. Mm. Good point. Good point. That's so, you know, that, that's hard for me to remember. I guess that having that mindset of this could be my last day. If you have that mindset of this could be my last day, then you have no choice but to be grateful for anything that happens that day because that could be your last day. That changes a lot. That changes your your, your mind mindset a lot. I like that. If you're if you're like me, I think a mean person at work, <laughs> and, and that was in fact your last day at work, they're only going to remember you as like an evil <laughs> evil coworker. <laughs> right. Or if there's somebody who is just trying to try hard and do their best. I like to share. I like to share um a story I read. It's a uh, the folk folklorist kind of famous folklorist in Japan when it was like a probably 100 years ago um he he researched something and on the way back home waiting for the bath and he met a, an old man he said um he has a good life he he raised the children and he was able to earn a lot of money and the last thing he need to do is to be a good ancestor that uh Last thing I need to do is to be a good answer. And the, the, the folklorist is, uh, was a very meaningful word that, uh, uh, he has something to do even after he died as a Mitama spirit. Want to look after his, uh, uh descendants, even including, uh, he never met before because they were not born yet. But he wants to be the person from, um, their descendants. So, you know, oh, my, my grandpa, gram, great grandpa, great great grandpa was a wonderful person, a very wonderful person, and they, they he watching over us. So uh, the old man want to be the good role model. So that actually he had the perspective there. He's a ancestors, yeah. I think he has a good ancestors. He respect ancestors. Uh, he want to show uh, he to his uh, grandchildren, great grandchildren. That's uh, important how to live. You have to be a good person. You have to be a good life. That's uh, very positive. Even think about your descendants. Not only the ancestor, but descendants. And that's mm-hmm. very, very uh, future oriented perspective. So even you die, still you live in become a spirit for future generations. Mm-hmm. A couple of weeks ago, um, somebody asked me a really question because he was, he was really um, trying to grill me on my, on my faith and my beliefs and he was like, do you believe in evil spirits? And I was like, no, we don't believe in evil spirits. Um, but we believe in spirits that are not at rest. You know, mm-hmm. that they died holding a grudge. They died maybe from suicide or, you know, they're not, they didn't die happy. That's basically what becomes evil spirits. And uh, we don't believe in evil, but we pray. We pray for their salvation. And, you know, when evil spirits do come out, um, they're only trying to be acknowledged. My mom always tells me, if you ever see a a, a ghost or like a, like a angry spirit, listen to them. Ask them. Like, you know, they want to be heard. They want, they want people to hear how they died or, you know, whatever they have in their heart. So, um, <clears throat> offer kindness and never hold a grudge against any kind of evil spirit because we just want to be saved. And I'm really, really glad that you know, we don't damn people to hell or depths of hell or just because they did something bad. And we look more towards the underlying problem of why people committed, like, you know, crime and like all these um, things that are considered sins. And we don't condemn the person, although we don't we condemn the act, but we don't condemn the person because that person, something was amiss in their lives for them to turn out like that them to commit such crimes we want to help nurture their spirit and their soul so they can be saved so they can at least pass away with a saved heart mm-hmm. i guess that's from from um from a lay person's point of view that's kind of i can understand um i, I can somewhat understand not condemning a person or not condemning the person but condemning their act um it's hard. I think it becomes harder though when you're the victim or the victim's family of that person wrongdoing or things like that. How? What is? You know? How do you? How do you comfort the person who? You know? How do you comfort like the victim's family? Like say someone murdered someone else and they, it's not like they deserved it. How? 
how do you guys view that kind of thing? And that's why we have the um, Toritsugi mediation. For Toritsugi, um, that's where people come to talk to the sensei uh, about anything that's bothering their hearts. You know, and something as terrible as murder, you know, it, your heart won't even begin to heal with just one session of Toritsugi mediation. So many, many encounters with the sensei, just getting all that frustration, anger, sadness, gradually out of their body, slowly, 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 praying for the person that was killed. And I know it's really difficult, but also praying for the person that killed the person. Uh, it's really important. You know how some other fates, they say, oh, forgive them, forgive the person that did it. But no, I don't think it works that easily. No, you don't have to forgive them. I think you should just continue to pray, pray for that person and pray for your own heart. And in doing so, um, you will begin to gradually feel compassion for the person that, that did all these crimes. Mm-hmm. It's not like a one time, one time deal or like, oh yeah, yeah, just forgive them, forgive them. Mm-hmm. No, no, it doesn't work like that. It requires a lot of time, a lot of toisi or spiritual counseling, but you know, toisi will really, really help this kind of situation. Mm-hmm. You know, people expect it, the religions can explain what's going to happen after we die. And many religions have an answer. Uh, Uncle Dietin has answers. Also, he said, I've never died, so I don't know yet. It's a couple answers, but that's interesting. That I have never died. Of course, I don't know, but you don't need to worry. You, <laughs> you focus on right now, which is living. Wow. Time. I was okay. going to say, that's kind of a smart aleck answer. for. <laughs> <laughs> but I see what he means. I see what he means. So there, there is a, a after die world. After death world. After, after death, life. after mm-hmm. day, death world. Is there something after death world? That's good. An after death world. I just think that we're gonna, we're just gonna live between the universe and the earth, just yeah. like how we're living right now. Mm-hmm. But we just won't have this physical body, the meat and the bones and the blood. And it's right. like um uh, a pot of water being boiled off. You know, you put it in a high temperature and the water begins to boil and uh, like the whole pot of water that was there, it eventually evaporates and you're like, well, okay, where did that water go? And you ask any scientist, they'll be like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's over here. It's, it's mixed in with the air that we're breathing, right? It's just a different form. Yeah, it's a different form, but the mm-hmm. atoms are there. Mm-hmm. So e- even when we die and we get cremated or just buried on, in the ground uh, and we turn into soil, um, uh, our atoms don't disappear. They're still there, but our molecules, they change into something else. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go back to so the universe. Ex- in a different, in different form. I think this uh, teaching is what Edna said, because uh, people, people think that Tenchi Kanuno Kami, a uh, divine parent, takes care of them only while they are alive, but they remain under Kami's care, divine parent's care, even after they die. Since the soul is bestowed by Kami, when one is dismissed by heaven, one soul will return to Kami and be in Kami's eternal care. Since the body comes from earth, it will also return to earth and be under its care. So we don't go n- nowhere, but still under the care, under the care of a divine parent. So some, some sensei, sensei said, uh, Kunko killed perspective to death is very akarui. Yeah, yeah. Positive, positive, very positive. very positive. Yeah, death is not the end, uh, but new beginning to be a uh, reincarnation. Reincarnation. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder what happens. I mean, if you think about it, you know, all the the, the the soil that is outside. I think maybe that was once somebody's body that got decomposed and turned into soil, and then when plants grow, uh, it uptakes the nutrients and like and like the atoms that were once a human being. And then it forms into like a fruit or like a vegetable and we consume that and that becomes our blood and flesh. And it's like, hey, this is kind of like a reincarnation. <laughs> and people are born through, you know, like the nutrition that we intake in our bodies and a new human being is born and it's like, hmm, everything is connected. Yeah, necessarily the human beings, but uh, maybe any other type of life, I mean, Animals, insects, 
plants. So definitely. Yeah, some kind of life form. Yeah, I can agree with the no sensei. My wife said that actually we can choose. If you want to reborn, you can do that. If you want to stay in the spiritual being, you can do that too. That's interesting too. But uh, oh. Honda never said that. <laughs> but we all know uh, the teaching. The place fertilizes the roots of a tree. Then he branches will grow lush. Respect your ancestors and parents, and they, then you will prosper. Let's realize that the roots of the tree, then its branches will grow lush. Respect your ancestors and parents, then you will prosper. I like the, this teaching. It's very clear that uh, our roots are very important. The roots we cannot see. Sometimes we ignore. But roots are very important so that... Uh, so uh, flowers bloom. We focus on that beautiful flower, but it roots our ancestors. We should not forget our ancestors. Yeah. Right. Oh, and going back to like you know how I said like we're spirit right here, right now, and um, uh, thinking that our our bodies like to be born as a human being is so exciting. I guess for a spirit, I mean, you get to experience a lot of things if you're a human being. I mean, if the spirit comes into a human being's body, you know, you get arms and legs to move and you get to smell different things. We have like all our six senses, right? We can hear, we can see, we can smell, we can taste, we can ah, feel and everything. So while we're alive, I think this is our, the spirit's opportunity, chance to enrich the soul, the spirit as much as possible learn the taste of all the delicious food out there, en encounter, you know, good experiences, bad experiences, uh, all kinds of stuff. See beautiful things with our eyes. And with that, the spirit is enriched. And when our life ends, our spirit and body is separate. So we can no longer see things because we don't have eyes. But the feeling is there. We'll know, we'll know what a beautiful flower looks like. We'll know what a chocolate cake tasted like, and we'll will be this enhanced spirit form. I think. What I. Mm. But while we're uh -huh. in this spirit, this physical form, just do as many things yeah. as you can. Mm. Enhance that spirit, and just don't waste your life. Yeah. Mm. I like that. That's it. Translated translates into into we have this great responsibility now to while we're in this form to experience all that we can and all that we were meant to be. Any other questions for you can say for us? <laughs> no, uh, it's about time. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, discussion. So if I'm to end, you like to say something? We close? My mom just told me this morning, but I don't know why she told me this. She didn't even know we were going to have a Nitama talk today. She said, oh, did you know in Congo Kyo that Tenchi Kane no Kamisama, which is our great life force, prays for the salvation of all people and Mitama spirits as well. I was like, what? That's a really interesting thing that you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So Kamisama, our, our parent God, our um, life force, equally prays for the happiness of everyone, even spirits that are considered evil. Uh, Kamisama wants everyone to be saved. I'll end it there. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy today's discussion. Thank you very much to Amy and Edna for today. Um, we hope to see you next time. Mata Aimashou. Thank you. Bye bye. Yep. Bye. Okay. Thank you very much. I think Amy is uh, uh, much better. I think the reception was. Yeah, better. downstairs. It's funny. Huh? Where am I? Oh, yeah. but I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we should tell that. Oh, that you know everything is energy so as well, right? And Ener everything is energy. We talk about spirits are energy, yeah. our thoughts are energy, so it's all connected. All right, so thank you very much. So weird. It is weird, yeah. Thank you. I actually had a, I had a question um from like a couple of from our first Congo talk. Really? From um, somebody listened to that. She was asking. Oh, the COVID. What was it? COVID, yeah, the pandemic thing. Mm -hmm. And then how about the punishment from Kamisama mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And then she was asking, she was asking about what is Konko Kyo's view on how, on, on bad things that happen to good people? 
the things that happen to good people. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. you know, like these random acts mm-hmm. of like someone's trying to see someone went into like a flood or whatever and tried to save other people and ended up dying or you know like random acts of crime that someone's trying to like someone's changing a tire for someone on the freeway yeah or something like that like how how does Konko Kyo view stuff like that and I didn't know how to answer her so wow did you hear that Koiki Sensei uh yes wow that is a tough thing yeah that's true yeah hmm so I mean it's not like that was like that person's the person who ends up Dying. I saw it, but there is a teaching yeah. like that, you know. There is a Konko teaching that goes, no matter how good or like Buddha-like a person may seem to somebody else, in the eyes of Kamisama, there's no knowing what kind of gobure that they have done, or like even even they might be even uh, tsugunai for the the gobure of their ancestors. They even said mm-hmm. that it may not even be their fault, but because of what their ancestors did. You're paying the price, uh, which is choto mesh. He sounds hidoi, but it's like, hmm, you know, yeah, that, that could be true. Yeah, good person and uh, people who have faced the difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the, uh, uh, interesting. Maybe the flow, the energy. If we know the, uh, if we practice faith and you know the kamisama, you may be able to avoid those, uh, the energy flowing to you. I don't know, but, uh, Meguri or whatever, we can op- we have a time to apologize, time to think about Kamisama. So that's uh, so close that we might get accident or whatever bad thing happen. Some people like a luckiest person, like YouTube, they is like a luckiest person. Maybe that's uh, that were able to maybe Mitama Sama was able to help for some reason or Kamisama. And some people are not able to get help in the moment. We, we don't know. Uh, but also, maybe those people already received so much blessings, they could die way before, uh, but they were, they were able to extend life until the moment. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, very last, they were able to receive virtue through helping people. Uh, so that, uh, maybe as a mitama spirit, they, they have, a uh, virtue, more virtue, so that, uh, Kamisama actually helping those people we don't know or uh, mm-hmm. beyond our understanding. So yeah. my um, interpretation is that uh, even the moment that those people actually receive a blessing. Yeah, you know what? I w- if if Kunko Sama could talk, I would really like to ask uh for like the Mitama spirits or like Kami Sama. So how many times or like did I like a was there like a near miss where I, I might have died, you know? Like seconds within second like seconds that I, I'm not aware of. And right. like I, I would be surprised what number that would be. Like, oh yeah, you would have actually died fifty four times, you know. And we saved you. We saved your ass, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa uh, you never know when or how you could have died earlier. Because mm. uh, some people, you know, they might have had a patient once who passed away. She was only in her twenties and it was really sad for her death. But I went to her funeral and mm. I realized only at the funeral that she would have actually died a few years ago than, than the day that she passed away. And then the family is really, really grateful for that because she had like some kind of kidney disorder, but they said that God extended her life. Mm. And she, she, even doctors were saying that she's going to die earlier. But her, her life was extended a few years, actually. So they're really, really grateful. Mm-hmm. And here, like, people who don't know about the story, like, I didn't know about that story. But before I knew about the story, I just felt sorry for her. You know, like, oh, she was such a sweet girl. Why does she have to die so young? Mm-hmm. And going to the funeral and then listening to the, what is that thing called? Eulogy. <laughs> eulogy. The mm-hmm. eulogy. I was like, wow, this person really received divine blessings. Mm. Yeah. It's perspective, yeah. Mm. Perspective. I'm still recording. No. Oh. So I think yeah. I can include that story. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to stop recording. Okay.